All right, guys, before we get this comparison started, I want to send a huge thank you to Von Kron from Twitter and for Enrique for sending these two headphones out for a review and a comparison. It's my first time having coffee in like four days and it's amazing. All right, guys, what's up? I'm doing pretty good. Uh, I'm feeling like a ridiculous comparison today. Speaking of that comparison, what are we comparing? The SR80 from Grado and the Grado GS2000E. Completely different headphones. One's coming in at about 100 bucks. The other one's coming in at about 1300. And I'm aware this is a ridiculous comparison, but I'm doing it to prove a point, which I'll talk about more in my concluding statements. Now, in the meantime, before I get there, I want to talk about a couple things before we get started. One is this video and this comparison is going to be done with the same pads. It's already a ridiculous comparison, so I'm not super strict on this being, you know, exactly the stock formation of each headphone when I'm comparing it. The pads that I chose sounded best for both headphones actually were the same type of pad and they're the flat pad that comes stock on the GS, I'm sorry, on the uh, SR80E. So my recommendation, if you have the sr leave those pads on there. Do not buy any other Grado pad because they all suck, all of them. And if you already own the GS2000E, buy the SR80 pads <laughs> and put them on the GS2000E. They don't sound great, but they sound better than they do stock. Now, of course, with all my comparison videos, when I talk about the headphones saying the bassier, the more mid-range focus, whatever it happens to be, I'm talking about how it compares to the other headphone in a bottle, not how it stands individually in the entire headphone market. Now, a couple bits of background on each of these headphones and my personal opinion about them. The SR80 is a $100 headphone that I think is fairly unique. I do not think it's the most perfect headphone at $100, nor is it the best value. Um, nor is it something that I would recommend as a primary headphone, but I do think it's a good secondary headphone if you want something that's a little bit unique, a little bit different, and you don't mind caveats like the build quality, etc. The GS2000E is my absolute hands down favorite headphone that I've ever tried. And if you can't sense the sarcasm in my voice, well, here's your, uh, your notification of my intense sarcasm because it is legitimately the worst headphone that I've ever tried. And I'm not joking about that. I wouldn't accept it for free unless I could sell it. I'm going to completely disregard price for this comparison until the very end when I make my concluding statements. I know it's ridiculous, but I guess I'm doing it for fun. So let's talk about the build first. Uh, the build, I will have to give the upper hand to the GS2000. They use wood and real leather. That is something that is lacking on the SR80s made of plastic. They both have proprietary built-in non-detachable cables, which both kind of suck. They feel about the same, the GS2000s being a little bit thicker though, and that does kind of add to the weight of the headphone, which I think is fairly comfortable with those specific flat pads on them that we're reviewing with. Uh, neither build outside of the bottle that we're talking about here is very good though. Uh, in fact, for their respective price ranges, they're particularly poor. Um, but similar build quality, they actually utilize some of the same exact components, like the pieces utilized for the headphone extension piece. Um, the cable quality feels about the same, just the GS2000 is thicker for some reason. Now regarding the power that these both have, they actually both have the same specs, coming in at a very easy to drive 32 ohms with a sensitivity level of 99 decibels. Both can obviously be driven from a cell phone and neither really benefit from going to a low end or a high end amp, so they're not super amp picky. All right, so let's talk about sound. The overall impression I'm getting from the GS2000E is actually coming from the stock formation, which is a fairly wide example of uh, a headphone, to a fairly intimate sounding headphone, very forward in pretty much all categories, treble, bass response, mid-range vocals, pretty much everything is forward on the modded GS2000E. Now on the SR80E, that is actually a medium to medium wide headphone. Uh, not really a super warm headphone, but there is a little bit of mid bass in there that gives it a little bit of flavor, a little bit of kick, and it has decent resolution in the high end. Now, speaking of that high end, speaking of the treble, comparatively, the GS2000 is definitely more forward, it's more present, but it's not very well resolved. And that's actually a huge issue that I run into with the entirety of the headphone. Um, everything sounds muffled and unrefined. And real quick side note on that, if you think it's the pads, it's not. Even on the stock pads, uh, which have no dampening whatsoever, <laughs> the resolution is just not there. The clarity is not there in any facet of this headphone. Now, regarding the mid-range for instruments, uh, they're actually very nice. I actually really enjoy piano on them. I do like the forwardness of the mid-range on the GS2000E. Now, the SR80E, while wider is better for a little bit 
more accurate soundstage in my opinion. We'll talk more about that later. So instrumental shape and imaging is nicer on the GS, or I, I'm sorry, on the SR80, uh, but forwardness and kind of immediate presentation definitely goes to the 2000E. Now, when it comes to vocals, we're talking about two completely different headphones here. Now with the SR80, you're getting these kind of crisp, clean sounding, a little bit far away vocals. They're not super focused. They're not super forward. They're definitely kind of back in the sound stage, you know, in that wideness type of uh, delivery that the SR80 really gives you. The GS2000 is definitely more focused. It's a lot more forward. Uh, I think like the difference between, uh, I don't know, this is an over-exaggerated example, but uh, K712s versus HD600s. One's really wide, one's really, really intimate. And while this comparison is not quite that drastic. Um, that's just kind of an example of the difference between the vocal presentation. Now, I would love that because I, I'm a huge fan of the vocals on the 600, not a huge fan of the K712s. I would love the vocal presentation if it was matched in resolution with its forwardness. See, one of the things that makes the 600 so great is even though it's super, super forward, it has an equal amount of resolution. So you're not just listening to this super intense yet muffled voice kind of speak to you in on the GS2000Es, what sounds like through a tube, like a muffled tube. It's not something that's very enjoyable to me. And it's different than the slight echo that I feel like the SR80 has. The SR80 has this kind of characteristic to it that's almost like a very, very tiny, very minute echo to the sound, specifically the vocals and the high notes. That I think adds a lot of character. This is not the same. This is a little bit different. It feels a little bit more, I don't know if conical is the right word, but that's what's coming to mind. Now, while I consider the GS2000 to have very poor vocal performance in everything but representation, it can be fairly enjoyable for artists that already kind of have that more untextured sound to most of their music. And I'm thinking of people who have highly edited vocals like Lana Del Rey. It's more of a creative style, but it's kind of like, I don't know, it's like comparing a, a, you know, a digital photo to a film photo, right? It's, it's a creative choice that looks different. Obviously we're talking about different levels of resolution, but that kind of comparison actually still is relatively applicable to the difference between the SR80s and the GS2000. The, the 80s, while further away, they're definitely more clean and they don't sound nearly as veiled as the GS2000Es do. Uh, the GS2000Es feel very, very veiled and uh, it's not very pleasant to listen to most of the time. Now, on top of that, they're also shouty at the same time. The SR80s are, yes, sometimes a little bit more forward, a little bit shoutier in the female vocals, um, but they're further away, so it's a lot less intense. Now, there was also another disappointing part to the GS2000E, which was the S range. Uh, S's are crisp and clean on the SR80. Again, they keep that characteristic kind of further away sound, but because the intimacy and the actual boosting of that S range in the GS2000E, which actually varied artist to artist, which is strange. Like Adele, it didn't seem to be an issue with, but on uh, Casey Abrams, for example, uh, he had a big issue for me. So that was a little strange. Um, but the S range was uh, kind of uh, a little bit painful on the GS2000Es, not nearly as painful or nearly as much of an issue on the SR80s. Now on bass response, they actually have a similar bass response, fairly pleasant mid bass, um, you know, between 100 and 300 Hertz, you're getting really solid performance there. I have no complaints from either headphone. Uh, both can go down to about 70 without many issues. I think the SR80 goes perhaps a little bit lower, maybe down to 60 or 55 without having too much roll off or, or getting too distant in the bass response. So for the bass response, I'm actually gonna give the edge to the SR80s, like the mid range and like the treble performance. So soundstage and imaging, uh, I'm gonna have to give both with some caveats to the SR80. Now there's one major caveat here, which is that the SR80 kind of has like a line of sound stages, far left and then far right. And it kind of goes everywhere in between. There's absolutely no forward or rear presentation. Uh, that is something that the GS2000 has, which is it's not nearly as wide as the SR80, but it definitely has forward presentation. So depending on what you like on your soundstage, you will appreciate one more than you will appreciate the other. I'm gonna give the upper hand in total width though, and also the tightness of the imaging. Um, 
and not having such a muffled image to, or a, a blurred image that the GS2000 has, I'm gonna give the uh, imaging and soundstage upper hand just slightly to the SR80. All right, so my conclusion. Uh, the SR80 in an objective comparative review, uh, disregarding price, pulls ahead in almost every category. So if you're considering purchasing one of the higher end or specifically, because I haven't tried all the higher end, so I can only speak for what I've heard. If you're considering pur purchasing the GS2000E, I would stray far, far away. Maybe check out the SR80, see if it's a sound signature that you even enjoy, and you'll save about 1200 bucks. So you're welcome if I saved you from doing that. Now, wall beating in almost every category, there's a few that it doesn't. Uh, soundstage, you know, that forward representation can be a very, very good thing. Uh, the vocal presentation is also something that's very nice. And the build quality, of course, goes to the GS2000. It does have a, in my opinion, nicer build quality. It is a little bit heavier, but the weight of it is not an issue for me at all. And I'd personally rather have a heavier wooden headphone than a, super lightweight plastic one, uh, just for what I consider to be a higher quality. My conclusion regarding price. Uh, the, if you consider price into this equation, it makes this whole review or this whole comparison that much more ridiculous. $1,200 more ridiculous. Uh, that's a lot of ridiculousness. Ridiculous bucks go pretty far in my household. I mean, I, I don't know what else to say. And I'm, I if you haven't seen the GS2000E review, I highly recommend you go and watch it because it's much more of a rant than it is a review because I'm, I'm very critical of that headphone. And the reason why is because it's $1,300, right? That's a lot of money for me. That's a lot of money for most of America. I, I think I, I've watched that review a couple times, even thinking about whether or not I actually want to post it. And... I keep coming back to the statement I made in the beginning, and I'm not trying to be like self-congratulatory or anything like that, but I do agree with it. And that statement was, if you're gonna charge big boy prices, you warrant a big boy response. And the GS2000 is a completely unacceptable headphone. Now, the flip side, the SR80E, again, not a perfect headphone, not even the best value for $100, not by a long shot, but it is different, it is unique, and it's unique in a way that I personally find to be enjoyable. I recommend checking them out. Um, I'll leave a link to them down below and I'll leave a link to other recommended items, not even headphones, that are $1,300 that you could better spend your money on. $1,200. Actually, you buy the SR80Es plus $1,200 worth of items and uh, spend $1,300 at the end of the day and you'll be much happier. Trust me. All right, guys. Thanks very much for watching. I'll catch you in the next video. My name is Josh, signing off.